then we could say it's smart energy then it could be your security surveillance then it could be your e-governance then yes obviously it could be a wi-fi so what are these different applications and how they are related so whenever we need to interconnect these kind of things so we need to sense that particular data then we need to collect it we need to transfer it and again if there is a line of action is behind it then we could say yes this is an iot so that's uh, on a whole uh, the internet of things is a technology which enables everything to communicate by themselves over the internet through the devices without the use of computers so yes we have done some of the things in advance already so uh, here it comes a most essential and uh, prevalent term in iot called as a smart which means uh, automation uh, the process of decreasing human intervention or uh, we could say uh, involvement thereby increasing a machine intelligence to perform every task by itself uh, which could be done by IOT. So IOT makes an intertwined uh, intervene network of uh, artificial things like uh, physical devices, vehicle, home appliances, and even to connect uh, with a we could say a natural living being like a plant, animal, and so on. And we have already seen uh, this kind of application uh, in our real life. So it, it's not something like a we haven't seen this kind of application so uh, maybe you have seen some kind of uh, like uh, there is some electrode being uh, associated with your plant and as soon as uh, it requires a water it will inform you that uh, please supply me some kind of water so these are kind of uh, application uh, that have been associated with a uh, IOT or you could develop it on your own so it's quite simple like uh, how this IOT works so this is actually uh, we could consider in a simple uh, diagram saying that uh, will require to make device uh, connected to world and this is your iot so there are actually three ways that could be done so the first one we could say uh, this is something like we'll say select a different color this is your first thing this is your second thing and the third one so let's see so the first one could be a man to machine this could be a machine to machine and this could be anything to everything so iot is not actually limited to man or machine or machine to machine uh, and generally uh, i think uh, you might have heard that uh, iot is not only uh, in this uh, situation it's not just called as iot it's actually internet of everything so many of the times uh, many of the organizations it pronounce iot to be a ioe internet of everything so while uh, we are dealing with this kind of things uh, we must know that we can connect anything anything in a entire world to an iot network and we can control it the only thing is what is the architecture what is the hierarchy that you are, that you are going to use so next will be uh, like some of the communication devices uh, that we used in IoT. 
so i'll just clear out this thing so as per your knowledge what could be a communicating devices so it could be a sensor then there could be a actuator then there is a exchange of data that to be done then there could be a rfid tag so these are the major elements uh, or uh, you could say uh, communicating devices would be there that are gonna play a vital role in this iot so we'll just start with so what we are gonna see is uh, now it's called as a communicating devices in iot so the first one is your sensor so we all know what is sensor or sensors so what is sensor or sensors is uh, it's actually a devices which converts your physical parameters uh, like your temperature motion etc uh, into an electrical signal and the smart sensors are the indispensable enablers of iot so uh, imagine uh, a scenario uh, consider a scenario of automated monitoring of a farm such that it will just indicate a current situation of crop like four crops need a water now i'm gonna pour it and then it will satisfy the crops need so this is actually a wonder that uh, this wonder is just because of the iot technology behind it so uh, how how will be the hierarchy so it will be like uh, the temperature sensor will be connected to a with a plant pot then it detects a low temperature then it triggers it so instead of this temperature and all this thing uh, we could use a moisture sensor or instead of again if you don't want that kind of thing then electrode we generally place it so where it will measure your or you could use a moisture even so as soon as the moisture level goes down it will uh, trigger your microprocessor platform like uh, if, if you want like raspberry pi arduino boards then as soon as it get uh, it gets triggered uh, it receives a sensor signal through an internet pathway such as uh, maybe a wi-fi or a bluetooth then it will notify the user and the motion sensor connected to tap uh, which turns the turns it on to pour the water so these kind of things are there and this so these are called as your sensors so the second one is your actuators so there is a difference between sensor and actuator the actuator is actually a device which is a contrast to sensor it transforms the electrical signal into physical movement so this was actually uh, the sensor was actually uh, considering your thing to be uh, it was like uh, what we see is a mm, transducer so like uh, you are converting some physical activity into an electrical signal and the actuator is actually doing something like the contrast way it is transforming your electrical signal into your physical movement so this is actually a reversal fact that sensor will convert physical movement into electrical and actuator will convert electrical movement into physical so this satisfy our work in iot so uh, actually in both the sensors and actuator are transducers so it's a maybe inverted way but they are transducer which convert one form of energy to other so the third would be they are called as exchange of data so you have a sensor you have a actuator then you need to exchange your data so how does it actually happen so exchange of data is the most important key factor in iot has the sensor and actuator plays a vital role here because till the point you don't have a data you could not exchange it so uh, the fourth element in your communicating devices of iot would be uh, rfid tag 
this could be different but i am just taking an example rfid tag or rfid tags so wireless microchip that is uh, used for automatic unique identification of anything by tagging it over them uh, you have been seen it in a credit card automobile ignition keys and so on since the interconnection of uh, or interconnection of the things is main goal of iot the rfid tags had uh, a tax gate handshaken with iot technology and is used to provide a unique id for connected things in iot so this summarizes to be uh, communicating devices and protocols in iot so these four things uh, will actually play a important uh, role so we'll just we have just seen it so it is a sensor it's an actuator it's an exchange of data and it's a RFID tag so it's just not only a RFID tag so whichever device or whichever sensor or element that could provide a unique identification that could be used so this is your communicating devices so uh, everyone really has a numerous questions circling in mind about how IoT works uh, what is behind IoT what are all sources of IoT implementation so we are just uh, giving a kickstart here uh, so how the IoT is implemented and how it is working uh, some of the main reason uh, you guys make your project in the IoT is the first reason is actually your uh, real-time data so yes it's really important to know that as uh, the first and foremost uh, step to begin is to consider let's take an example if you're going to make an application uh, where there involves a lot of real-time analysis so it could be anything so uh, on that real-time analysis you need to take an immediate action to be performed uh, and then you can opt your choice for uh, making your project as iot so what is the real-time data actually means so uh, is it something like uh, oh let me clear this scenario first so so i'll repeat my question it's simply like uh, so what is the real time data actually means to you so uh, let me tell you assume that you are running um, the best hotel full of the testiest food and your regular customer is arriving at 11 pm the hotel is uh, 11 pm is actually uh, the hotel's closing time and uh, you have ordered his most favorite dish naan panavati masala uh, paneer butter masala unfortunately the paneer stock has got finished thus you are in a situation of uh, rapidly getting a and uh, getting that thing and preparing a dish to serve uh, you for a regular customer this is a real time analysis and tackling a situation in a wise manner so the customer at expected time and uh, customer uh, actually we could say he has arrived like at unexpected time like we do so it has made the situation worse for that hotel owner that how i could just provide him uh, some it's a favorite thing so thing is customer at unexpected time and paneer is unavailable this is called as a real time unexpected data and the second thing is instant preparation so it's called as a real-time analysis and situation tackling now it seems clear that uh, real-time data is unexpected or unplanned data which is to be collected so we'll just write it down here so that we could remember it very well so oh, i'm sorry so i'll repeat it again it's called as a uh, real-time data real-time data is never been an kind of a organized kind of thing so we could never say that real-time data will be organized or in a form yes you could actually monitor that what are the behavior of that uh, kind of data being explored to you so it is like if it is a re uh, repetitive nature and you can easily understand that yes uh, this is how the data is being coming but in general uh, whenever it comes out to be uh, said like a real time it's never a planned thing it's actually uh, unexpected 
and actually plus unplanned so this is the real time and obviously uh, you need to process this data you know, first of all you need to collect this thing process thing and deliver it instantaneously without any delay so uh, example like in traffic monitoring system the real time data plays a important role uh, for example like uh, if you are in a traffic and if they will uh, deliver kind of whatever thing they need to control if they cover it after a half an hour then it, it's of no use it's not an iot so it has to be an instantaneous role that whatever action you need to take you need to take it in a real time and the second reason is actually your intelligent action that uh, uh, whenever we consider this iot we want our system to be an intelligent so whenever we say it's an intelligent system so what is mean by an intelligent system or intelligent action so it's in general if you wish to uh, uh, lessen a human uh, monitoring uh, and you are most fond of automating everything to make your product or service to make a benchmark then you can make a use of iot so wherever it's a automation then it is gonna be a intelligent action so consider an example uh, if you are engaged in a peak tense work and always entering home at late night to solve this imagine uh, your air conditioning system automatically turns on before you have entered the home and makes you cool after you arrive then after hearing the sound of opening your house door the radio system plays your most favorite song and lifts you to the like a comfort zone the same example suits for uh, for the iot uh, consider the smart irrigation system assume that it notifies you uh, like six crops got the pest attack um, it's like a we could say a real time data so it's not something like uh, we could uh, <coughs> say that uh, it would be working like uh, offline thing that attack has been happened now you do whatever you need to do so it is simply like key, yes it has happened now so whatever action you need to take you, you can proceed with it so it is like a, it's a real time data so that the action to be performed immediately hence the fertilizer itself will uh, find and spray the uh, crop with a paste attack it's called as automation so real time data here will be a attack and automation will be like uh, we are attacking with a attacking paste with a fertilizer so this is called as your iot so the next thing is uh, need uh, for setting up an iot environment for basic application so it's like choosing a platform for a development so which provides a powerful toolkit for iot development and uh, an end-to-end -end management that connects the devices smart sensor iot gateways to the cloud so uh, you might have heard something called as a aws iot then microsoft azure iot then there is uh, uh, many of them are there actually so what is aws iot so i think uh, you have heard uh, aws so aws is your I'll just write it down here. So, what is AWS? So, it's actually called as a Amazon Web Services Internet of Things. So, what it provides is so the first thing in choosing platform. So, we have a platform. So, the first one is AWS, and the second one is Microsoft. Azure IoT. So, what is AWS IoT? So, it's a uh, it's a cloud platform designed for uh, IoT apps uh, with the facility of assuring millions of devices connectivity, and it acts as a data C. And also, uh, it supports all SDK like embedded C, Python, Java, etc. Uh, but whereas in Microsoft Azure IoT. The Azure is a cloud platform that uses Microsoft Visual Studio SDK and uh, it collects and analyzes real-time devices data using a pre-configured 
remote monitoring system so this is actually a part of choosing a platform for iot and uh, in a second thing while we are designing a system it's always coming like uh, choosing iot hardware so platform we have selected which hardware we need to select so what are the system we uh, that we already know so basically you have gone through like arduino and raspberry pi and there are actually multiple things that are being available so what are the things that are being available or known to you so like uh, uh, we could say uh, there are some platform which have been uh, used by you in uh, in your coming years or you have been already used those things so like uh, Beagle Bone is there then there are numerous hardware which are available so out of which whichever you know I'll explain you about that thing so Arduino is uh, actually a open source electronic uh, we could say a prototyping platform the simplest and the beginner's choice always the it has been used to create an interactive IoT electronic applications uh, it is the first microcontroller based development board uh, it is actually uh, easy to program for beginners by Arduino ID so the setup procedure is also it's known to you and it's quite easy uh, it itself has a 0.5 KB of bootloader that makes a program to burn into and circuit uh, all we have to play with the Arduino is to download an Arduino software and to start a code uh, the Arduino program are actually called as a um, sketches so in Arduino we use simply like C or C++ so what are the advantages of this Arduino so Arduino uh, does have advantage like uh, we could um, it's actually we could say it's an open source system so it's easy to use then it is inexpensive it's a uh, cross platform or multi platform then it's flexible and we could uh, even say it provides uh, pre-wiring and free code libraries and again uh, the last is actually uh, we could say more reliable for a hardware application it's like a simple connection so we have a port we have a processor we have a sketch we just burn the thing we uh, make a use of open source platform and that's it so second thing is your raspberry pi so uh, what is raspberry pi it's actually a palm size computer uh, constructed with an educational goal simply like uh, for it has uh, it had simply like uh, various versions were available for it so it is constructed for actually uh, educational goal then even for a non-technical user so whoever wants to make some kind of commercialized application they could even make it so the uh, it uses actually your what we could say your SD card uh, as a main storage and it runs on a customized Debian system called as uh, Debian Linux OS which is called as a Raspbian OS and uh, it also allows installing all packages such as Node.js then Python and so on you could anything uh, what do you expect to do with a Linux system uh, generally it has a 4 uh, USB ports and 40 GPIOs then HDMI port then AV source so setup procedure is even like uh, for a raspberry pi is actually quite easy so anyone can uh, any one of the bootable operating system is needed to be written on a sd card using these apps then connect display keyboard mouse to the pi and make it like a normal computer then pi supports a video output which can be hooked to a monitor or even to a tv using hdmi port and that provides uh, normal computer abilities then the necessary actions uh, code is done with the help of any specific application the basic raspberry pi languages uh, are like uh, you can use a python scratch so what are the advantages of using these kind of hardware so it is actually a multiple task uh, you can perform at a time uh, like a computer it's easiest internet connectivity uh, available on your raspberry pi as compared to your arduino uh, because whenever you want something like uh, internet connectivity on arduino you need to acquire some kind of uh, stacks are there you need to acquire that shield then you need to incorporate it and program it and then it will happen so this is a inbuilt thing 
so uh, this works on actually a GUI uh, uh, your Raspberry Pi so it's actually a um, GUI means your graphical user interface mode because uh, we could work it on a HDMI port so that's why it's actually works on a uh, GUI but if you want simply like uh, wherever you want uh, minimal use of CPU at that point you could actually go for cli also command line interface so it is actually a best suited for a server based application uh, that is it can be connected via ssh secure uh, cell to access a raspberry pi command line remotely and file sharing via ftp uh, your file transfer protocol and it it's actually more reliable for a software application uh, then important thing we'll next see is to use little beacon so i think uh, you have you have been known with the fact of beacon what are the beacons so yes let me clear out this thing and we'll start with the next segment so bluetooth beacon uh, so third segment would be that uh, the first one was your platform selection while designing uh, internet of things the second one is your iot hardware so in a platform we have choose uh, whether you want to go aws or microsoft azure so these are just a sample there are many of them so even it is the same case for uh, iot hardware that apart from your arduino and raspberry pi there are numerous hardware which are available and we have been uh, following those through uh, many of the semesters or years or we have came across them so uh, what is actually these kind of boards are there so how much you know about this board is not an important thing the only thing is how you implement those board into an iot is an important part uh, and apart from arduino and raspberry pi there are numerous boards like uh, uh, udu as a stinker board then there are uh, something called as a tessel light beacon and beagle board then uh, or what I had uh, used is Beagle Bone and uh, what you could say is a QB board. Then Arduino Yun is there also there. Then uh, even like Linkit Smart Kit is there. Genuino boards are there. MSP430 launch are there. STM boards are there. STM32, uh, STM32 discovery boards are there. Even uh, mostly known uh, hardware in IoTs nowadays, what students generally prefer or even researcher use is actually your node mcu so even a node mcu can be utilized as a iot hardware so in a uh, last segment of uh, this bluetooth beacon or we could say uh, in the segment of choosing a hardware or uh, uh, this is actually in general a segment which is called as a needs of uh, setting up this iot environment to uh, set up a IoT environment, we generally require to use a platform. We need uh, IoT hardware, and this third thing is called as a Bluetooth beacon. So, what is this Bluetooth beacon? So, basically, uh, the Bluetooth beacon is uh, embedded with within a device to allow IoT object to broadcast information. So it is simply like uh, uh, we'll acquire some information and we'll broadcast it, uh, broadcast, it, uh, broadcast that particular information to nearby mobile devices so that it can communicate. So beacon, it's kind of a lighthouse that repetitively transmits a signal or a single signal to other devices called as a Bluetooth radio transmitter. So these are actually three different segments while you set up your uh, IoT environment. So I'm just repeating it again. So first one is your platform in which we could select these kind of platforms. Then second one is your IoT hardware. So it could consist of your Arduino, Raspberry Pi or whatever boards we have discussed till now. And the third segment comes out to be a Bluetooth beacon. So these three things will comprise and make a IoT environment. So now uh, in the last part of this video uh, we'll just uh, focus on discussing some of the application and some of the advantages of this bluetooth uh, and uh, whatever hardware or even in general uh, for a iot we are 
going to discuss advantages so i'll just write advantages of iot so the first one comes out to be a uh, communication so that is the biggest advantage of uh, iot in which uh, it's easy communication or we could say uh, between a machine to machine communication human to machine communication or anything to anything to uh, everything or everything to everything so it could be anything so these are kind of uh, advantages of iot so communication then there is a more information which is available then third one is your uh, time that is being consumed is time we could say time saving then the fourth one is uh, your automation obviously we could get automated a thing and just because of automation only we are using iot and uh, more we could say bare decisioning power so the hardware depending upon what you have program they could take a better decision in extreme cases then we could say the money saving obviously uh, if some plants are situated at different location then it becomes quite easy to deploy iot and utilize it instead of uh, getting into actually on that particular site and uh, again from that we could say it could uh, remote control all the plant or whatever iot application we have designed then we could obviously continuously monitor that thing and last uh, we could say that uh, efficiency or efficient uh, handling so these are the some of the advantages of your iot so obviously if there is a advantages then there comes with some kind of advantages so i just choose a different thing uh, let me select my pen mm, yeah so we were talking about disadvantages disadvantage so what could be a disadvantage the first will be like lagging of standard compatibility then more opportunity of uh, for a failure then loss of privacy and security because uh, many of the researcher or uh, security experts even said that that uh, it's not an actually called as a iot uh, internet of things uh, this is generally referred as internet of threats so many of the researcher had gone through that kind of uh, security aspect and they said that obviously if you ever say that uh, yes it's advantageous but uh, in many other security based aspect it's actually disadvantages so these are the disadvantages so what we could say of iot so i'll repeat it the first thing is your lagging so lagging means uh, standard compatibility lagging that uh, some of the protocol and uh, architecture uh, that have been used will be different uh, the more opportunity of failure that it could fail any time and obviously it's a hardware so it comes with some chances of failure then privacy and security threat and last one we could say uh, that more dependent on technology so we could say it is a technology dependent that uh, obviously if you know a technology then only you could uh, able to handle the thing or deploy a thing if not then you cannot so the summary of uh, whole setting of iot so i could just simply say um, set setup of iot summary so the setup should be uh, the first thing thus uh, whenever you try uh, you are trying to set up an iot you must identify a problem or a purpose so we'll just sort it down to like a problem so what is a problem or what is a purpose of setting up purpose 
of set up so this is the first the second would be more opportunity uh, could say opportunity to um, now nah. we could say identify a data collection challenge so it could be a data collection challenge that how many nodes would be there how many uh, uh, receiving ends would be there how it will be processed so it's a challenge so data collection challenge and then it would be identifying a cloud platform for a data storage so obviously it's iot then we need to understand what is a cloud platform so depending upon that cloud platform will move ahead uh, then there will be a coding into an processor or kind of a hardware or analysis you want from that hardware will be one of the element and again enhancing some of the advantages or disadvantages like uh, whatever cons and pros that have been there on when you were working on an individual basis so an amount of these advantages or disadvantages that doesn't matter so these will acquire into an setup of iot so the now will ahead with the applications of iot so what are the different applications that we have uh, been known to an iot so i'll just simply write here an applications of iot so i'll just keep it on side <coughs> so, yes. so we'll just move ahead with the applications of iot so i'll just uh, try to use my brush on itself okay so yes what are the application that have been known to us so we'll just discuss it uh, one by one so smart city uh, will consider it as a first so smart city or home whatever you think a smart city or a or smart home both sound like something uh, right out of a science fiction book or show but now uh, nowadays it's not something like it's a fiction but it's a true fact uh, smart cities uh, fired up uh, our imagination since the time they were uh, incorporated into a television cartoons uh, like uh, the jetsons and all the other things the smart home is generally supposed to have a following feature uh, like uh, you have known to those features so it is like smart kitchen so uh, obviously you want smart kitchen to be incorporated then obviously there has to be a smart plate then there has to be a smart drop so what are the things so first thing is like uh, you want something like smart plate it will be equipped with a, a wi-fi wet sensor and camera the dish will be watch uh, what you eat if you overload it then it will send you an alert that by uh, this kind of thing so that is a smart plate then drop uh, simply like it allows you a selection of a dish you wish to cook and with the help of smart scale you can put together a recipe for your liking whether the recipe can uh, drop a suggestion involving that uh, use of one bowl most of the time meanwhile uh, it will also ensure that less cleaning up after cooking so uh, another feature is simply like in your smart kitchen kitchens or appliances will be like smart fridge uh, this will involve an artificial intelligence built into it communicate with uh, other devices in smart kitchen or smart home uh, and, and they have been developed simply like there is a 29 inch front screen taking a notes and in putting that specifics to a fridge content and depending on it uh, it will inform you or uh, it will demand you for something then also uh, there is application for this uh, smart home or specifically smart kitchen uh, is actually like a smart cooker uh, which allows you to adjust uh, your cooking setting like cooking temperature cook time uh, enabling you to warm up and turn off the device irrespective of what you are uh, or where you are uh, like when if you are at home or in a market or wherever so uh, simply like uh, learning a thermostat and all those things could be uh, done with your smart home 
then even there is a smart lock like a keyless lock which can unlock by means of an application that can run on your smartphone and many more such devices can uh, make the life around your home much easier the smart city is actually a urban system that uses the information uh, and we could say a communication technology in order to make uh, infrastructure more interactive uh, make infrastructure more efficient and importantly make an infrastructure uh, more accessible uh, that is uh, it is available when we need it a uh, smart city uh, in the need of our because of uh, swiftly increasing metropolitan population uh, then quickly diminishing store of natural resources and environmental and climatal changes uh, then now in a smart city obviously uh, it could comprise of many of the things like smart homes smart parking lots uh, and each parking slot will have some occupancy sensor to sensor presence or absence of vehicle and depending upon that uh, vacancy will be uh, deployed or it would be broadcasted and it will be available for other people and uh, even applications like smart vehicle with a smart health smart roads industrial automation smart retail and a lot of applications are available with the iot so what exactly is the internet of things so final uh, aspect of it would be and many more applications are there but it will be relevant to take all of them into an uh, consideration so what exactly is the iot so in general whenever it is called iot so we need to just consider uh, two words that entire uh, requirement of a building of iot is totally based on first thing is system has to be a uh, dynamic and the second most important thing is it has to be self configuring then only we could say it's an better iot application or better uh, we could say uh, environment or uh, better system required which is actually using as a iot so what exactly is iot is uh, it refers to provide a network connectivity and computing capability to everyday uh, sensors and objects allowing them to exchange like uh, consume data without any human intervention or minimal human interference uh, the internet of thing is thus a dynamic global network infrastructure with self configuring uh, capability based on a standard or uh, interoperable uh, communication protocol where physical and virtual things are uh, things have identities uh, physical attributes and virtual personalities uh, so uh, such kind of uh, uh, data associated with the user and the environment could be often used uh, in building this kind of network and uh, what is this uh, dynamics of an uh, uh, dynamic requirements of an system so it is actually simply like iot system and devices should have their uh, capability or ability to adapt uh, changes in operating condition on the go like if there is uh, happening something in a real time then it should dynamically work on that and the second thing is self configuring uh, so self configuring means uh, it should allow a large number of uh, devices to work together in order to achieve a certain functionality uh, should work on interoperable communication protocol in order to uh, we could say uh, facilitate communication between various devices each device in an iot uh, should have a unique identity that helps uh, helps in controlling it uh, by mean of internet thus everything that we discuss shall have a sensor built into it so smart city home and various applications are there and even uh, government of india has launched a smart city plan and many of the things are there but over a time it would be implemented and it will be all over iot so this is it about uh, all the introduction to iot so i hope you find this thing interesting and knowledgeable so hope to see you in the next video thank you So hope you all are carrying a welcome to this live stream of wireless network in which we are in this segment we are going to study what is IoT internet of things just IoT.
so in that we'll just briefly get into through the introduction or like uh, the segments which can associate with the iot what are the different elements that are associated with iot what are the parameters that you need to consider and obviously uh, there is one of the important part is architecture of uh, iot and all other requirements of iot security in iot but that is uh, some part or some segment that is being covered in the next video so in this video we will primarily focus on introduction